everybody there. Hiya. This is the fourth Gain Creative Confidence session. Hello. Hi, coming in. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Nice to see you all. Hello, everybody. How are you all doing? It's Monday again. How fast do these Mondays come round? It freaks me out. Hello, everybody. Nice to see you all. Glad you can join. Fabulous. This is all good. Okay, right then. Let's get started for the fourth Gaining Creative Confidence session with Psychologies Magazine. Um, as always, I just need to tell you about the offer that's on this week. So this is this month's edition. And if you would like this popping in to your post box every month, then go to the link in the bio at Psychologies for the latest offer. So that's the latest edition there. So how are we all doing? Are you all doing well on this Monday morning? It's the first day of the school holidays officially. So that's going to bring a challenge in itself. So what I'll do is keep these a little bit shorter, I think, throughout the summer because I know we're all busy and I know we're all looking after children. So it gets um, a little bit trickier. For those who have never joined before, I am outing the Sinead-ish look today. Um, I've been slowly growing my hair underneath a headscarf after six months of chemo, um, which I finished in May. And I decided now is the time, and plus it's just getting too hot. So I've had to um, just be brave and, and get it out there. But it's, it's, it's a bit longer now, so it's gone past the fluffy chicken look, which is all good. Thank you, Claire. Um, so today we are going to talk about, in the past, the first session we talked about memories as inspiration and we linked it to trees. Today I am going to talk about a little bit what, I've kind of wrote in my blog about today, actually. So, um, thank you, Rachel. So, yeah, when I was look writing my blog today, I was examining closely how my childhood had affected my creative journey. And that kind of got me thinking a little bit more. Um, when I wrote a lot about that, and I'm kind of writing this for a book that I'm writing to, I realised that animals are a really big part of my childhood and that's what's kind of shaped um, some of my creative journey. So my childhood involved a lot of animals. We were very much a family that loved nature, went to Scotland every year on bird watching holidays. My dad was a big bird watcher and we I grew up in the woods. I was a complete tomboy. We only had boys on our street, so it was a case of play army or have no friends. So I definitely was a tomboy growing up and I lived in the woods and that's where um, a lot of my creativity came from because you built dens, you worked out how to hang a rope swing from a branch, you played crazy games in there and you survived all day without any entertainment from your parents, you just made it up which is what creativity is all about, it's problem solving and entertaining yourself and getting lost in that really kind of childlike um way of just being really involved in what you're what you're doing so in play essentially so that got me thinking about animals and how we can use that as inspiration for our creativity as i said i grew up in the woods but we also had a pet shop so we grew uh, bred not grew bred lots of different animals for the pet shop to sell and there were many stories related to that. And because we were kind of known for this in the village, anything that required, hello everybody, anything that required rescuing came our way, um, which was interesting. All kinds of things would turn up on our doorstep. And one of those um, rescue stories was a rook that we called Rolo, which was from some of the 80s storms and the nests all kind of flew, um, got blown down in Bretton Woods and we found this baby rook and took it home and reared it at home and called it Rolo and it was a crazy bird. I was only 10 or 11 at the time I think and it would fly down to the bottom of our street. We were on a hill on our street and if you called it it would land on your arm which you know was pretty cool for an 11 year old. I was, I was quite happy with that. So that's just an example of you know just one of the many kind of rescuing stories and I thought we could use this today um, in, in our challenge. So 
with it, you know, when, with all these stories that I kind of gathered in my childhood, I'd write these up in, in English lessons. My teachers were a bit like, is this real? But quite often it was, um, it, you know, it was Dr. Doolittle's house. So I had a lot to work with, but I also know that, you know, all of us have connection to animals in some way, shape or form, whether that's pets or something else. You know, it could be a passion for tigers, for example, you know there's all kind like with trees there's all kind of examples that we can use to create some stories out of i also remember as a child i don't know if you guys do or if i'm just too old but there was um you know reading books with animals in so famous five for example the dog timmy in there was a right character um black beauty obviously i was kind of obsessed with black beauty i used to horse ride as a child as well and things like um lassie and littlest herbo you know, that the, that kind of like sad music of when um, the, at the end they would go on to their next adventure. I remember it really, really well. So all these kind of things can link into these memories that we can then create a piece of writing out of. I've got a whole load of list of other examples as well, just to kind of um, jog your memory and get you thinking about what memories you might have. And many of these are actually true, which is quite scary. So, um, you know, they'd be your first family pet. So, for example, my first family pet was... Uh, <laughs> I am desperate for a horse, scared of them now, though. Oh, no, why are you scared? Don't be scared, they're lovely. Um, so my first dog when I was little was Lassie, a very much Heinz 57 dog. And that is me with her, aged about, I'd say about three or four, I reckon with a really dodgy fringe that my mum cut. Thank you, mum. Um, and so, yeah, that was my first family pet. And I definitely remember um, her being around and, you know, that just joy of having, like, a friend as a dog, you know, a dog friend, basically. Um, there's things like trips to the zoo. You know, the first ever time you went to the zoo, that's always an experience in itself. You know, the first time you see giraffes and lions and things like that. There's um, perhaps feeding baby lambs at a farm, so you might have had the opportunity to do that. I'm really lucky in that I've got a friend who's, um, I call her a shepherdess, and last year I got to go to her field and feed the lambs, and I was just in my element. I absolutely loved it. There's things like donkey rides, your first ever donkey ride on a beach maybe. So again, I've no idea, how, I don't think I'm even, I'm probably just past one here. So this is me with my dad on a donkey. Um, I've no idea where that is, but I was very, very young there, being held on. So there might have been an experience with that. You might have been scared to to get on it in the first place, but then loved it. There's things like becoming vegetarian, for example. So when I was 16, I decided, you know, that was it. I was an animal lover. I was no longer eating meat for several years. So that might be a, there might be a story in there. Um, scary stories as well. So there's fears of animals so that could be spiders or snakes or moths or anything like that it might be um a situation where you really jumped because you're scared hello everybody coming in you may be scared of that thing um i remember once answering uh, the phone to my auntie having just got out of the shower and we had a mirror opposite our telephone and there was a spider on my shoulder and i could see it and i screamed blue murder and um ran away yes i'm not too scared of them now but i used to be so that's another example. There may be one where um, you've had a pet that you lost that went on on its travels and you ended up putting posters up around the village to try and find it again. That's happened to me several times. Um, you could have worked in a vet's, for example. So when I did work experience, I worked in a vet's and this is linked to another few examples. So stupidly, I thought hedgehogs were friendly and I stuck my finger in and it bit it. So off to the hospital I went for a tetanus jab. That's when I was working um, on work experience, age 14, bit bit dafter then. So yeah, that's another example. Um, I don't know about you, but when I was younger, I think they still do that this these days where they have the animal come to school and they bring several pets or well not pets actually more exotic animals so i remember um i got picked on to stand up and have a great big python wrapped around my neck which thankfully it was okay with i'm quite scared of snakes now so but younger i was i wasn't too bothered so yeah that was an experience in itself um a couple of years ago, we went to Mexico as a family on holiday and we got to release baby turtles into the sea. So this was uh, one of the baby turtles. 
waving goodbye before we set it free into the sea and that was an unbelievable experience um, because they have such a kind of low chance of survival when you're setting them free and you're kind of watching them for ages thinking please make it so yeah that was an experience um it might be that you know you got really affected by an animal program or film so david attenborough was always on in my house when i was a child and i still to this day what love watching all the planet earth programs and things like that or it might be a film like war horse or something like that that really kind of tugged on your emotions um at the moment i'm obsessed with this week on the farm which is a local um farm cannon hall that have been doing loads of lives during lockdown and it's it's been great for people that haven't been able to get out like me sort of shielding and they go around the farm and talk about the new arrivals overnight and things like that and that's turned into a program on channel five on a tuesday night uh, i think it's nine o'clock eight or nine o'clock um called this week on the farm and and they both write characters and telling the stories of the animals again so that's um that's a good one mythical animals as well so um Loch Ness Monster for example as I said we went to Scotland um a lot when I was younger and we whenever we went past Loch Ness we'd be looking out for the monster purely probably you know for my parents to entertain me for half an hour but I totally believe that the Loch Ness Monster was in there there's also things like Bigfoot Bigfoot um mythical animal and obviously Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer as well so those are ones that you could write about that you might remember um thinking about as a child it could be that you've brought a puppy home to your own family so for your own children um and just the experience of them being really excited and, and bringing that new member of the family in um you know it's a great experience and one that children always remember so you could write about that as well and then often these kind of stories could um then move on into characters so for example at the moment i'm writing um a novel or have been for some time and within that novel i've i've put an animal character in there a spring spaniel called buzz and i purely did that not just because it linked to the story which i think it has to do i don't think you can just kind of throw animals in there without them having a reason to be in there but it was also because you know i had the experience and memories of having a dog and i kind of wanted to share that because i knew i'd be able to do it in an authentic way and it for t- to come across as um real and relevant so i really wanted to do that although you don't often see animals in um novels thinking about it so i don't know if i've made a huge kind of mistake there i don't know but i think as so long as they have meaning towards the story then then it's okay um claire who's uh on this call i think or she was earlier she t- changed her um pet betsy into betsy the pirate pup and made her a character of you know a really nice children's story so you you could do that you know you could take it to the next level about it not just being a real kind of memorable story but you could create a character out of them if they've got particular personality traits like um, my crazy dog has then you know there may be a way in which you can do that and extend that creative story there um just looking at some kind of old memories, I I used to be obsessed with kind of frogs and toads and things. So we built a pond and that's me there holding, you can't really see, but it's holding like this giant toad frog. So it might be the first time you held something like that. Um, that might seem quite scary at first, but then you got into it. And then, as I said, we had a pet shop and many animals, rabbits, guinea pigs, mice, gerbils, you name it, we had it. And this is me with my first ever rabbits babies so i'm holding the baby rabbits there really tiny and again you know just another really great memory so what i want you to do today uh, from this challenge is to write either about a pet or an animal or a related memory to a pet or an animal and really kind of convey what happened but also it be a real descriptive piece about how you feel about that animal um and how you would describe it in terms of personality um again using all the senses you know how cuddly it might be or you know it might be the first time you held a sea urchin out of the sea they're incredibly spiky things like that so think always when you're writing about all these different senses that you can get across the full kind of experience to the, to your reader about so does that sound something that you guys could work with if it is can you put a thumbs up please i hope it is and um today's blog post 
um, lists all these different experiences as well. So, you, you know, you can go back and have a look at those and hopefully some of those will jog your memory. I'm sure there'll be absolutely loads that you've got that you can share as well. And it's just a really nice exercise and it's, it's something you can do with the children as well. Thank you, Anna. Um, so, yeah, if, if you're wanting to give them something creative to do, you could do that as well. Um, you could also photograph your animals in a different way if, if that's something you prefer to do if you're not really um, big on writing. Thank you, everybody that's putting thumbs up. Um, so, yeah, you could always go on there to... Uh, hi there, so oh, I'm just reading this out. Hi there, sorry, only just joined. Can you explain what this session is about? Okay, hi Izzy. So these are gaining creative confidence sessions and the aim of them is to kind of talk through something to do with creativity on each session, but then to um, issue a little bit of a challenge to you guys to take up, to get you being creative in the first place. So I kind of give prompts and ideas as to what you could either write about, draw about, photograph or any kind of creative um, medium really to have a go at these things. So that's what these sessions are about. Today's has been all about kind of animals and pets. And, you know, if you've missed the first bit, you can always go back and watch afterwards because I always post them on Psychologies and on my social media later as well. So if you've missed the first bit, by all means do that. But it's just to have encourage you to have some creative time in your week where you can just have a go at something that's just for you. You get into that flow mind state, so it's great for well-being. And especially at the moment when we've got the kids at home and you you know you might just want some time to yourself. And it's just, um, like I say, an exercise. It's very hard to kind of do this stuff from a blank page or, some, you know, you might be able to come up with loads of ideas yourself if so that's great this is for people who just need a little bit of guidance really as as to something that they can do and have a go at so this is what I do when I come in and I provide prompts for you to have a go at and then people kind of rise to the challenge and it's a bit of a creative community and there's account you know some accountability there you're welcome to share your work online so you can do that through psychology's connected communities page or you can do it on my Curious Creative Club page either. Or you can direct message me on Instagram and I'll happily share in my stories as well. But you don't have to. It's entirely up to you. Um, you know, no force in doing that whatsoever. But if you'd like to have a go, then um, please do. And, you know, it's been really, really lovely seeing everybody's pieces of work come through. Quite often they come through on a Monday. So if I haven't come back to you yet, it's just because I'm preparing for this session. So I will do later, I promise. And, you know, it's really nice to share and see what everybody does and how different everybody approaches it as well. So last week we talked about using different art materials instead of the traditional paints, pencils and everything. We used all kinds of things um, that we talked about in there for the background to use as like paint as well and also um the tools that you do that with so if if you're interested in that doing some kind of artistic work then please go further back on the post on psychologies and you'll see that there and that is a really great one to do with the kids so if you missed that one please have a look back there and you'll see what that one's all about as well so this is the fourth session um all these are shared on psychologies tv as well so if you go on to psychologies magazine facebook page i think it is on there, there's um, a link to their TV thing at the top of the page and all my sessions are under the Better You category. So if you click on there, you'll see all mine on under there if you want to go back and have a look and have a go at the challenges if you've only just joined. So that's it for today. You know that you can find me on social media, on Instagram, um, at The Curious Creative Club or at Facebook as well and um, the Curious Creative Club. I blog every Monday um, about all kinds of things at the moment. I'm trying to kind of link them to this work as well so that you know it's kind of an extra bonus for you guys and you can read up all, all the background to this live today. So you can go and have a read on there. It should be live later on today. I've just got to finish it off. And there's also the Curious Creative, sorry, no, the Curious Cave, sorry, on my website where there's loads and loads of different resources, books, podcasts, people that I follow on Instagram, all of which are connected to creativity and I think will be able to help you and inspire you. So by all means, go and have a look at that as well. And 
I will be back next week, next Monday, with another session. Um, I'm not quite sure what that's going to be yet. I've got a few ideas. I woke up in the middle of the night the other night with quite a few ideas and jotted them all down. But if, if you have anything that you particularly want to look at or want me to look at, then by all means message me as well. So I think that's it for today. I recognise you're all on school holidays, so it's a little bit harder to do this stuff. But I really recommend you trying to carve out a bit of time for yourself, even if it's just half an hour. That's all you need to get really involved in this stuff. And it just helps you switch off from everyday life and have a bit of you time, which, you know, we all need in summer holidays. Let's let's be honest. So just a reminder, this is Psychologist Edition for this month. The offer is in the bio of how you get this delivered to your door. Obviously, a fantastic magazine, and this will help you through summer as well. Um, and yeah, that's it for today. I'd love to know your thoughts. Please, you know, comment on anything that we share. It's really useful to know if we're hitting the right mark on these sessions. And I hope you're enjoying them. Like I say, I'm loving your work coming through. So I'm really, really glad that it's inspiring you guys. And yeah. I look forward to seeing what you come up with and all your animal or pet stories. Okay, enjoy. Thank you so much. Bye.